In English, sometimes the uh, letter T represents a phoneme SH, like an in information. Sometimes the same letter T represents a CH phoneme, phoneme like an adventure. But when this T letter represents, uh, or double T in sometimes, represents an actual T phoneme, there are actually many different ways to pronounce it. Uh, for example, like an aspirated T, like in the word time. And also, <clears throat> like a, like a partially, like a partly fricativized uh, T, uh, which T, which uh, is uh, found, also aspirated, in the word in the word trunk or tree, and so on. Uh, the aspirated one is uh, found in uh, at the beginning of words like time and at the beginning of a stressed syllable like attack and then you can find train tree trunk etc um, now you can also have a T that is uh, pronounced like an alveolar tap which is uh, which sounds similar to the alveolar flap, which is in Spanish the short R. For example, uh, tres. Now, in English, this is uh, found in the word, excuse me, this is found in the word uh, butter. So, in American English, in American English, when you have a, a T sound, which is found between two vowels, and begins a syllable that is not stressed, it can be accordingly tapped and pronounced as an alveolar tap. Sometimes uh, in phonetics this is uh, referred to as an alveolar flap, you know, even though uh, this might be technically uh, incorrect. But uh, since the flap is the r and the tap is the d uh, characteristic of uh, American English, but since there is no phonemic distinction in any known human language between an alveolar tap and an alveolar flap, uh, sometimes people allow themselves to be uh, a bit uh, lenient with the terminology. Either way, the sound is butter. Um, <clears throat> in, uh, <clears throat> in British English, certain accents of British English, like for example London English, this can be pronounced as a glottal stop, meaning that there's a closure in the glottis to pronounce this sound instead of anything going on with your tongue in your mouth. Uh, for example, um, well, instead of a plosive actually happening in your mouth, your tongue might move, for example. Uh, at least that's the case when there's glottalization in American English, like in the word get. But let's get back to butter. Uh, in BBC English, you would say butter. In uh, American English, you would say butter. And for example, in London English, you would say butter. Meaning that you would glottalize this T in this position, where in American English it's, uh, it's uh, tapped or flapped. Uh, now, in uh, there's a now let's uh, return to glottalization. In American English, glottalization can happen, for example, uh, when the T sound comes after an N, for example, important, where at the end there's a glottalization, instead of saying important, you say important. Uh, you notice that after the R, the T is flapped. You don't say important, but you say important, or maybe you can say important, but many people say important, at least in some situations. Now, another, uh, the T can also be glottalized after, uh, before uh, 
after an N and before an L, for example, uh, recently, right? Instead of recently. Usually people say recently. Um, okay, back to globalization in a second. As I was saying, um, as I was saying, globalization can also happen uh, at the end of a word, whether it comes after an N or not. For example, the word get, but, put, can't, etc. Instead of get, but, put, can't, in this uh, position you can pronounce a softer T, an, un an unaspirated T, like get, can't, or you can just glottalize the T, like get, can't. In American English, the glottalization is accompanied by an alveolar gesture, meaning that your tongue actually does touch your palate as if it were to make a T, but it doesn't really produce the plosive. It doesn't really release anything. You just say get. Um, so one thing that I have to remember uh, in my own learning is to remember to not glottalize the word final T's when I speak Dutch because this phonetic process does not apply to Dutch as far as I know. Uh, this is something that learners of Spanish can put into place, uh, but I'll come back to that in a second. Talk to you guys in a minute.